Mother, is Maxwell House the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. <laughs> June. It's a wonderful month, isn't it? Full of warm sunshine and clear blue sky and orange blossoms. We mustn't forget the orange blossoms. June is the month of brides, which brings us to Springfield and a white frame house on Maple Street. It was the Andersons, you may remember, who got a poor chap named Tom Goodwin to propose to Margaret's cousin Louise. As a result, the Andersons are blessed with a wedding this coming Sunday. Ah, but it's a happy time, isn't it? Like this. Forty dollars for chicken salad? Jim. There isn't that much chicken salad in the world. Jim, the children will hear you. Well, let them hear me. Let them hear me. Dear, I've told you a dozen times. I agreed to pay for Louise's wedding. I know that. But good grief, Margaret. Forty dollars for chicken salad? Jim, we have to feed almost 80 people. 80 people? You mailed the invitations. You knew in the very beginning how many people were coming. I don't know. I agreed to pay for a simple little home wedding. No fuss, no bother, no... Betty! Betty! Did somebody call me? Will you please stop that horrible racket? Jumping creepers. Gotten so a man can't even think around here. People running in and out, telephones ringing, bills piling up. The bills don't make any sound. <laughs> they don't, huh? Listen to this one. $12.36 for the rental of chairs. Why did we have to rent 75 chairs? Jim, they have to sit somewhere. We've got chairs. We've got all kinds of chairs. Father. We've got dining room chairs, living room chairs. Why do we have to pay $12.36 for chairs? Father, may I speak to you for a second about... Just a minute, dear. Jim. Mr. Abbey said I was very lucky to get 75 chairs. Oh, sure. He even gave me a special price. I noticed that. What's the 36 cents for? <laughs> That's for tax. Good. I hope he puts one in the center of each chair. <laughs> Jim, really? $40 for chicken salad. Now, Mother? Dear, this is a very bad time. But it's the last day if I don't ask him now. All right, dear, but don't stand too close. Margaret, the way you talk, you'd think I bit people. Don't you? I haven't bitten anyone in months. <laughs> what is it, Betty? Father. No. Jim, you might at least let her ask. All right, what is it? May I buy a new pair of gold shoes? No. I let her ask. Now is everyone happy? <laughs> Your feet will be under the piano during the whole ceremony And no one will see whether your shoes are new or old But I'll get up later No one will see them later either They'll be too busy eating chicken salad <laughs> We're in the den, bud Flowers and candelabra and Look at this one Baked goods, $27 That's for the wedding cake, dear And 12 dozen rolls 12 dozen? Hey, Mom, I found out where I can rent one for only $7.50 why do we need 12 dozen rolls? Who? Oh. Jim, when you have 80 people... That's 144 rolls. What are they going to do with the rest of them? Throw them at the bride and groom? <laughs> oh, dear, I forgot to order rice. Father... That's pretty good, isn't it, Mom? Only seven fifty. I can get silver shoes for 10 if that'll help any. Wait a minute, Betty. Bud. Yes, Dad? What can you get for only seven fifty? A tuxedo. Joe Phillips knows the place. A tuxedo? Jim. Why does he need a tuxedo? He doesn't really, dear, but... Holy cow, Mom. You said I was going to be the head usher and... You can be an usher without a tuxedo. All you're going to do is hang up hats and coats. I have to show the people to their seats. Show them? They'll be tripping over them. <laughs> Haven't you heard? We're getting 75 extra chairs. Jim, really? 
We'll have so many seats, there won't be any room to stand up. I can wear them with practically anything, so it's really a good investment. Daddy! Oh, honey, this is getting ridiculous. Well, if I'd known you didn't want my cousin Louise to have a, a pleasant wedding... I want it to be pleasant for everybody, including me. Daddy! Kathy, will you stop shouting? But it's awful. It's terrible. What is? Angel. There are 842 white ones and 738 blue ones and only 400. Twelve pink ones. What is she talking about? <laughs> the flower petals. How can I be a flower girl with only 412? Wait a minute. You counted the flower petals? Well, Bud said I had to. Bud! <laughs> I, uh, I didn't say she had to, Mom. I, uh, I just said, uh, well, um... <laughs> <laughs> yes? Well, she was getting in everybody's way, and uh, I thought, uh... <laughs> yes? Uh, I'm sorry, Kathy. For what? For making you count the flower petals. Oh, I didn't mind. People get married every day. Thousands and thousands of people. <laughs> but if I don't get some pink flowers, everything will be ruined. Kathy, I'll get you some pink flowers. Oh, fine. Thank you, Daddy. All she has to do is open her mouth and she gets anything she wants. Betty. But if I want a pair of shoes... You don't need a pair of shoes. What are you beefing about? I'm the head usher and I can't even get a tuxedo. <laughs> Bud. But how would you feel if you had to go to a wedding in a pair of old shoes? I go everywhere in old shoes. <laughs> I don't have anything but old shoes. Bud. How would you like to be a head usher without a tuxedo? Bud, the front door. But I have to tell Dad... I'll about... get it, Margaret. I'll be glad to get as far away from these head ushers and flower girls as possible. Jim, if it's the florist, tell him to put the stands in the garage. Yes, dear. And I can use another bunch of blue ones, Daddy. Blue ones, pink ones, shoes, tuxedos. Silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, Hello. You're back early, aren't you? Hello, Jim. Oh, Jim, we got the ring. And, oh, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Isn't it, Tom? Oh, I wouldn't say that. I'm looking at the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Tom. And just 24 hours from now, she'll be my wife. Forever and ever. Would you mind closing the door? You're letting the flies in. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Margaret, Louise and Tom are back. I'll be right in. Hi, Louise. Hello, dear. Everything sure is exciting, isn't it, Jim? Uh, yes, very. Louise, wait till you see what I've got. Darling, we didn't expect you back for hours. Margaret, we got the ring. You didn't. She just said she did. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most beautiful petals you've ever seen. Where is it? Oh, Louise, you've got to let me see it. Betty! Louise and Tom have the ring. They have us. I don't know. <laughs> All you have to do is say something around here. You get an argument. Show them the ring, dear. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Tom, you're not supposed to lose it until tomorrow. <laughs> oh, uh, here it is. Uh, let me see. I want to see it, too. Louise, it's beautiful. Why don't you wait until you see it? <laughs> I just know it's beautiful. Oh, it is. Is Louise. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Do you really think so? Oh, it's just a ring. Bud, come look at Cousin Louise's ring. What for? <laughs> Why, Bud? What difference does it make what I think about it? I'm only the head usher. <laughs> What's the matter with him? He'll be all right. Everybody else can get what they need, but not me. I don't count. Oh, Bud, it can't be that bad. Oh, no? What kind of a head usher am I going to be without even a tuxedo? If he needs a tuxedo, why doesn't he get one? Now, wait a minute, Tom. <laughs> you can rent one for only $7.50. You see? Tom, don't you think I ought to get a pair of gold shoes? Betty, you're not going to get gold shoes, so stop talking about it. But Tom said... I don't care what Tom said. Margaret, I told you we should have had just a small, quiet wedding. I know, dear, now, wait but... a minute. You know, this is my wedding, too, and I don't like small weddings. Tom. <laughs> After all, how many times do you think I'm going to get married? Tom, a small wedding is every bit as legal. 
I know that, but... I think Jim is absolutely right. Now, wait a minute, Louise. We've been all through this, and you agreed... I agreed to marry you, but I didn't agree to become part of a Roman circus. Louise, if you'll only listen... All this fuss and bother, and for absolutely no reason. What do you mean, absolutely no reason? Tom, there's no sense arguing about it. After all... I think it's ridiculous to go to all this expense. Louise, it isn't anything. Really, it isn't. You mean I can get a tuxedo? I always said that if I got married... If you got married? He means when he got married, don't you, Tom? I want to know I've been married. I want music and flowers and excitement and everything. Otherwise, what's the sense of getting married? Tom, I think you and I had better have a little talk. Louise. About what? About a lot of things. Look, kids, there isn't any sense to this. There really isn't. You're both excited and upset. Well, Tom? Go ahead. Talk. I'm listening. Margaret, will you excuse us for a moment? Of course, dear. Uh, why don't you and Tom go into the den? But we'll only be a minute. Are you coming, Tom? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. She gets all upset like this, but it blows over in two seconds. We'll be right back. Gosh! I'm not going to get a tuxedo, huh? Now, look, bud. Jim, I hope you're very happy. I've told you a hundred times. What? This whole thing is your fault. My fault? Margaret... I told you in the very beginning he should have gone to a hotel. Honey... It's bad luck for the groom to see the bride before the wedding, and you know it. I know he's saving six dollars a day by sleeping with Bud, and if that's bad luck... It's not a question of money. Of course not. What's money to this family? If we run out, we just go down to the basement and print a new batch. We do? Kathy, be quiet. But Daddy said... They're coming back. Oh, uh, the florist suggested Smilax, but I thought a white background would be so much better. Uh, don't you, Jim? Hmm? Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, well, dear, is everything settled? Yes, quite settled. Well, what kind of a wedding are we going to have, large or small? We're not going to be married at all! Well, women and their ways can be pretty much of a mystery to any man, especially when it comes to weddings. And father's no exception. But there are many things the head of the house just naturally knows most about. And truly good coffee is one of them. Fact is, your husband is the world's greatest coffee expert. Now, we're often called experts, too, since more families buy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand. But when you make coffee for your family's pleasure and enjoyment, the judge you want to please is your husband. And tomorrow, if you'll fill his cup with the rich, completely satisfying goodness of our Maxwell House coffee, we promise he'll beam with delight and say, Gee, that's grand coffee. We're sure he'll say that. In fact, we'll return your money if he doesn't. You see, no other coffee tastes like Maxwell House because no other coffee's made like Maxwell House. In all the world, there's only one recipe for that famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor, a recipe demanding choice, extra-flavor coffees, blended and roasted just so. And only Maxwell House has this recipe. So take home a pound of our coffee. Serve your husband, Maxwell House. If he doesn't say, best coffee ever, why, just send us the can and unused portion, and we'll gladly refund your money. Our address is right on every familiar blue tin. Yes, tomorrow, please, the world's greatest coffee expert, your husband, with the truly fine flavor of Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. A few unhappy hours have passed, and the great romance of the century is still colder than an umpire's heart. Tom is in Bud's room packing. Louise is in Betty's room, packing. But the Andersons haven't given up. With $40 worth of chicken salad in the icebox, they'll fight it out if it takes all summer. Like this. Louise. Margaret, there isn't any point in discussing it. I just won't marry him. You're both acting like a couple of kids. I'll get it! Darling, you and Tom have been friends for so many years. You're not going to let a little thing like a wedding spoil your friendship, are you? Jim. Well, you know what I mean, honey. 
What difference does it make whether it's a large wedding or a small one? It doesn't make any difference. Then why is everybody all upset? Mother! What is it, Betty? Mr. Abby says that you're sure you want to cancel the order for the chairs. Just a minute, dear. Louise. I won't marry you, Margaret, and that's final. Oh, dear. Louise, I mailed invitations to almost 80 people. I'm sorry, Jim, but I won't do it. Well, I've done everything I could. Tell Mr. Abby we're sure, Betty. He says he's going to run them to somebody else. Tell him we won't need them, dear. Okay. Look, Lou. Jim, if Tom and I disagreed this violently in the very beginning, what's going to happen next year? And the year after. Louise, you don't fall into a successful marriage. You make a successful marriage. He's right, dear. You're an adult. So is Tom. You've got your own ideas, your own way of doing things. You've got to compromise, learn to adjust your lives to suit one another. It won't work any other way. But how about love? Doesn't that enter into it? Of course it does. Love is the only thing that makes it possible. Mom... We're in here, bud. What did the florist say? He said he's going to have to keep the deposit because he already ordered all the flowers. Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret. That's all right, dear. I just hate to see the whole thing. You want me for anything else? You'd better hang around, bud. Something might come up. Okay. I'll be downstairs if you need me. Louise, maybe if I talk to Tom again... I'd rather you wouldn't, Jim. Really. Well, it's your funeral. I mean wedding. (laughs) (laughs) Darling... There's no sense in you being so gloomy. I'll go back to Middletown and we'll forget the whole thing, won't we? Will we? Would you after you ate $40 worth of chicken salad? (laughs) He's only teasing, dear. Have you seen that chicken salad? We'll be eating it for three years. (laughs) Mommy, it's Dr. Swain. Dr. Swain? Oh, dear, I forgot to cancel the minister. Uh, Tell him we'll be right down, kitten. Okay. Louise, Dr. Swain's here for the rehearsal. I know. What am I going to do? Just tell him that it's all off. This won't be the first time. Uh, Louise, you understand my position, don't you? What position? They're not going to be married, so why have a rehearsal? Jim, please. Darling, would you and Tom go through the rehearsal for my sake? Honey. Just the rehearsal. Then I can explain to Dr. Swain later. Margaret, why don't you just tell him? Will you, dear? It'll save me a great deal of embarrassment. Well, if you put it that way... You fix your face. Uh, Jim and I'll go in and speak to Tom. Margaret. Come along, dear. Well, what's the use Come along, dear. (laughs) I don't know. I'll be down in two minutes. That'll be fine. Jim, I could strangle you. Me? (laughs) What did I do now? Don't you understand? Dr. Swain is our last chance. For what? There isn't going to be a wedding. There might be a wedding, believe me. Now go downstairs and get everything ready for the rehearsal. I thought we were going to speak to Tom. I'll speak to Tom. Now will you please do as I ask? You wouldn't like to explain anything to me, would you? (laughs) I'll explain the whole thing later. Jim, please go downstairs. Okay. I don't know why, but I'll do it. That's the trouble with women. They always explain everything later. Perfectly simple solution to the whole thing. Tell Dr. Swain there isn't going to be any wedding and stop wasting his time. But not my wife. She has to be fancy about it. Hello, Dr. Swain. Mr. Anderson, this is a happy occasion, isn't it? Oh, yes. (laughs) It's practically hysterical. I I beg your pardon? I mean, uh, they'll all be down in a minute. Oh, Well, you've got the children all set, haven't you? Oh, yes, indeed. We're an old hand at this sort of thing, you know. Father. Just play the piano, Betty. Your mother will explain the whole thing to us later. Jumping creepers. Daddy, is it all right if I throw the flowers? Sure, if you run short, you can throw a little chicken salad, too. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Henderson, are you sure everything is all right? Oh, don't. Daddy, Dr. Swain, he makes jokes like that all the time. I'm a very funny fellow. (laughs) I see. What does an usher do at a rehearsal? He ushers. (laughs) Oh. Good evening, Doctor. Mrs. Anderson, my, how happy you must be. 
And this, I presume, is the fortunate young man? Yes, this is Tom Goodwin. Hello, Dr. Swain. He lives in the YMCA. Kathy. <laughs> Doesn't he? Uh, not for long, I'll wager. Eh, hey, Mr. Goodwin? Well, you can never be too sure. Yes, I... What was that? Hey, he said, uh, to be sure, Dr. Swain. Oh, uh, it sounded like, uh... Oh, well, no matter. Ah, here we are. Louise. I'm sorry if I've held everything up. Dr. Swain, this is my cousin, Louise Baker. Charming. Perfectly charming. You're a lucky man, Mr. Goodwin. Well, I wouldn't make book on it if I were... Oh, <laughs> sorry, doctor. Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, shall we begin? I think that's a very good idea. I think... Not now, dear. <laughs> uh, how shall we start, Dr. Swain? Well, now, it's very simple, really. Uh, Mr. Goodwin, you will stand here. All right, doctor. Flower girl here. All right, doctor. Uh, Betty will play the wedding march. All right, doctor. The matron of honor here. All right, doctor. And the best man here. I've got a lady in the balcony, Doctor. Jim! <laughs> I mean, uh... Yes, Doctor. Uh, now, uh, the bride. My, uh, that is a problem, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, now, uh, someone has to stand in for the bride. It's very bad luck if she does it herself. I know, Doctor, but there's no one left. Well... I see someone we can use. Who? Oh, no. <laughs> Come along, bud. Mom, I can't be the bride, please. <laughs> Dear, no one will ever know. I don't want to be the bride. I just want to be an usher. Bud, stop arguing and be the bride. Louise, please. Bud, will you stop acting like an infant? Uh, I didn't want to... I told him I was... Holy cow. <laughs> well, now we're ready. I wish I was dead. <laughs> All right, bud. Stand in the archway. Mom, how can you do this to me? Anytime you're ready, Betty. Okay, I, I mean, yes, doctor. Splendid. Now the flower girl and the bride. Come along, children. Bud, don't you dare step on my flowers. I have to use them again tomorrow. Kathy, so help me. If you tell one person... Bud, stop talking and walk like a bride. <laughs> my own family. There we are. That's fine. All right, Betty. Now, the bride stands here, the groom here, and I here. Are you watching, Miss Baker? Uh, yes. I'm watching. Splendid. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together. Well, we'll skip down to, um... If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. <laughs> I presume no one will speak. That's a little joke of mine. <laughs> Very good, too. <laughs> now, I say, Thomas Goodwin, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife? Dad, please. Bud, will you be quiet? But I can't, Dad. Honest, I can't. Bud, really? I don't want to get married. I'm too young. <laughs> oh, Bud, you poor angel. Louise. Never mind, dear. I'll take your place. Go ahead, Doctor. Well, if you aren't worried... Oh, we'll be all right. I certainly hope so. Very well. All right, Betty. Thomas Goodwin, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor her and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her so long as ye both shall live? Boys. Oh, Tom. Mr. Goodwin, you say, I will. I most certainly will. Louise Baker, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? Margaret. Who live together Jim, after God's quiet. ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? I finally got it. Wilt thou Congratulations. Him, him I, uh... In Got a new job for you. And for oh. all others, How would you like to replace General Eisenhower? Make me an offer. 
I will. When it comes to coffee, your best value is always the brand with the most in flavor for your money. Because it's flavor that makes coffee drinking such a pleasure. And it's flavor that has made Maxwell House Coffee America's favorite brand. And today's best coffee buy. So take home a pound of Maxwell House and serve that wonderfully full-bodied flavor to the world's greatest coffee expert, your husband. When he smiles at you and says, best coffee ever... You'll know Maxwell House has the flavor. Then just count all the really good cups you get from each pound. You'll be convinced it's Maxwell House for value, too. This weekend, then look for the sign of good coffee, the big white cup and drop on the familiar blue tin. That's Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> It's Sunday now, and only one word can describe conditions in the Anderson household. The Andersons are in a tizzy, like this. But you've got to give me the chairs, Mr. Abbey. We ordered them. I'll get it. I know we canceled the order, but I'll give you three times. But Mr. Abbey... Okay, stubborn old character. What did he say, Jim? They don't have any chairs. Oh, dear. Mother! Mom, where's Mom? What's the matter? Mrs. Davis says she'll bake two dozen rolls if that'll help any. Daddy! What does Betty mean she can't find Louise? I don't know. That's what she says. Betty! I'll be right down. Daddy, it's a telegram. For us? Who's it from? Just wait till I get it open, Margaret, and we'll all know. You want Mrs. Davis to bake the rolls? In just a moment, bud. No! Jim, what is it? It's from Tom. They've eloped. Who <laughs> eloped, oh, Father? They can't! I know they can't, but they did. Holy cow. What does elope mean? Jim, we've got 80 people coming and we've got nothing. Nothing but chicken salad. But no rolls. No bride and groom. That's the worst part. Father, who elope? Margaret, if I ever get into a mess like this again, so help me. Hello. Oh, hello, Miss Thomas. We're going through a... You what? In the file. Oh, Miss Thomas, you're... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Thomas. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, Jim, what is it? I forgot to mail the invitations. <laughs> Folks, Gainsey, the famous talking dog, always says... Gaines meal. What about Gaines meal, Gainsey? <laughs> Nourishes every inch of a dog. It sure does. Kennel and laboratory tests prove Gaines meal supplies balanced nourishment your dog needs for good health. Yet Gaines costs less to feed than any other type of dog food. So, folks, get Gaines meal. <laughs> America's largest selling dog food. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, June Whitley, Rhoda Williams, Norma Jean Nilsson, Isabel Jewell, Olin Soule, Jack Carroll, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Dragnet, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Dragnet, the story of your police force, is next on NBC.